Hey guys, welcome back to Graphic Novels. So we just finished up with The Telltale Heart and we are going to be moving into Frankenstein. So this week we're going to talk about an introduction to the novel and the novel adaptation and the graphic novel. Our desired result is how is a literary text adapted into another medium? At the end of this lesson, you'll have some background knowledge of Frankenstein in preparation for reading part of the text and a graphic novel adaptation. So what do you think about what comes to mind when you think of Frankenstein? Is there a picture? Do you hear something? Um, what really comes to your mind? And if I think about that question, I see like a green almost like cartoonish figure that I think has been really turned into like a pop culture um, character, more so like around Halloween and things like that. So if we look at these representations, we can see a lot of different representations and pop culture of Frankenstein. So maybe in your kitchen, you have Frankenberries. Um, if you've ever seen The Nightmare Before Christmas, we see Sally here at the bottom. Um, she is definitely derived from the idea of Frankenstein. Um, so this picture of a show from probably the 60s, it was the Munsters. And we see that Herman Munster is some type of form of Frankenstein. Um, he's very much known for this stitching across his forehead um, from those different parts, these bolts that had seemed to bring him to life. Um, this square topped head, very make, those are those figures, those main characteristic figures that we can think of when we think of him. Um, there are representations in Scooby-Doo, looks like the bride of Frankenstein here. We sometimes seem to think of Frankenstein as a monster that walks with his arms straight out, doesn't really bend his legs, can't really walk well, doesn't really say much. Um, and we're going to kind of talk about how the character was maybe meant to be to how he kind of evolved over the years as well. So you're going to learn the basic plot of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, and we're going to read some excerpts of the original text. So next week, you're going to read the graphic novel version of Frankenstein, and you're going to compare and contrast the original text. But first, um, a pretty impressive uh, writer is our creator, our author of the story, which is Mary Shelley. So not only was it pretty impressive to um, write this story in general, but as a woman, and a very young woman to write this story. Mary Shelley was only 19 years old when she wrote the story. Um, definitely at a time where men really dominated um, the world of literature. And she is really known with kind of creating this horror um, type genre um, that hadn't really fully been discovered yet. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But she was born in 19, I'm sorry, in 1797. So William Goodwin and Mary Wollenstonecraft. Her mother died shortly after she was born. Her parents were both philosophers and feminists, which I think has a lot to do with why she became such an important writer of the time. Shirley believed that she could work in a world that was kind of male dominated. She was an avid reader and a scholar. And through her father, she knew some really important men of the time. William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. And she ran away with poet Percy Shelley, which was really scandalous because he was already married and she was only 17 years old. Um, and like I said, she wrote Frankenstein when she was just 19 years old. So a story that is such a huge part of pop culture and history um, that has lasted for so long, um, was written by someone who was a teenager and as a woman at the time, which is so impressive. She had four children, only one survived to adulthood, and she tried to preserve her husband's legacy after he drowned. Um, the possibility of her death on February 1st, 1851 is thought to be a brain tumor. 
how I then, a young girl, came to think of and to dilate upon so very hideous an idea. In 1815, shortly after the death of her first baby, Shelley recorded a dream that may or may not have had a direct influence on the plot of Frankenstein. On March 19th, 1815, she had recorded in her journal, dream that my little baby came to life again, that it had only been cold and that we rubbed it before the fire and it lived. So this is one thought about where this idea had come from. In the summer of 1816, Percy, Shelley, and 19-year-old Mary visited a poet, a very, very famous poet, Lord Byron, at his villa beside Lake Geneva in Switzerland. So stormy weather frequently forced them indoors, where they and the Byron's other guests sometimes read from a volume of ghost stories. Um, one evening, Byron challenged his guests to write one themselves, and Frankenstein was actually based upon Mary Shelley's waking nightmare. So she said, I saw the pale student of unhallowed arts kneeling beside the thing he'd put together. I saw the hideous phantasm of a man stretched out and then on the working of some powerful engine show signs of life and stir with an uneasy half vital motion. Frightful must it be, for supremely frightful would be the effect of any human endeavor to mock the stupendous creator of the world. So here are some key points about Frankenstein. And this is probably the number one that I can think of is that Frankenstein is the name of the scientist, not the monster. I didn't know this at all until probably the last couple of years as I started to teach Frankenstein more, but I always just assumed that the monster's name was Frankenstein. The um, That's actually the scientist who like reanimated him or put him to life. The monster was actually never given a name. He is called Frankenstein now, but at the time was not named. Um, Frankenstein brings this creature to life and then he immediately abandons it. Um, so the creatures first yearns for human companionship, but that's denied to him due to his hideousness. Um, and then he yearns for revenge against his creator. So he was really meant to be like this kind of a superpower every man. And um, they wanted to use kind of these best parts to put him together, but he ends up when he's reanimated to just look so hideous and scary that he's really unable to be accepted. And that's all he really wants. <clears throat> so these bring up some questions um, and themes like ethics. So what is ethical behavior? What happens when people go too far and meddle with things that they shouldn't? Should people be held responsible for the consequences of their actions, even if they're unintended? So there is this question of where is too far and creation? Um, can science maybe go too far? These are some questions that people might question as they're watching or reading. Then there's this idea of acceptance and belonging. So what happens when people are denied companionship? Then the idea of nature versus nurture. So are some people naturally evil or do their experiences turn them evil? And then revenge, is revenge really sweet? So that's a question that's really gonna be brought up in this story. So we're gonna be reading, like I said, the summary of Frankenstein. You'll be watching the short summary video. There will be some excerpts um, and questions to answer. And obviously our review of the Jive result is how is literary text adapted into another medium? We have some background knowledge of Frankenstein in preparation of reading the text and graphic novel adaptation.